Uh, for now, uh, let me ask um, uh, Governor Spinilla. Uh, in banking practice, when there are withdrawals in a bank, the the amounts, if the amounts are large, aren't there levels of authority so that if this is the amount, the branch manager can authorize the withdrawal. But if it's a bigger amount, some officer higher up can uh, can uh, authorize the, the the withdrawal, depending on the volume and the hugeness of the amount. Am I correct, uh, sir? Um, Mr. Chairman, the the deposit accounts are the property of the depositor, and uh, may withdraw the funds as. Uh, warranted but however uh, those kinds of transactions may also trigger alerts depending on the situation mr. chairman as theoretically would you say 30 million dollars uh, withdrawal in one day uh, is um, a, a an amount that would trigger what you call an escalating alert uh, mr. chairman uh, mr. governor mr. chairman in the normal experience amounts like that are are huge are large so it is unusual mr chairman so it depends on bank policy they a bank is required under our regulations that are that implement the anti money laundering law to uh, establish policy by which uh, certain transactions will raise alerts uh, with respect to the bank and if triggered this uh, would uh, require a procedure in terms of how this would be dispense with Mr. Chairman. Ms. Sabad, uh, in the course of your investigation, you've been investigating this. Have you not talked to the top management of the bank? We have not, Your Honor. You have? We have not. You have? We have not, Your Honor. You have not. Okay. Okay, so let me get back to Governor Espinilla. Are you telling me that some banks even at the amounts of 30 million, 20 million dollars, do not have a procedure of having a, a hierarchy of uh, approvals? Uh, Mr. Chairman, it actually depends on the, uh, the, um, the nature of the customer and the business in terms of how that customer is uh, profiled uh, by the bank for uh, Speaking in general, Mr. Chairman, so uh, an amount that is not characteristic of the particular relationship of a bank with a customer would uh, trigger an, under a – because every bank has parameters in terms of what triggers alerts in terms of transactions occurring in a bank. And would you say if a bank um, does not have a system of uh, alerts – when it comes to amounts up to of uh, 30 million, would be grossly deficient in its checks and balancing system and anti-money laundering uh, system. Mr. Chairman, um, if uh, conceptually we're talking in the context, 30 million dollars is a big uh, amount uh, in normal uh, business uh, transactions. So every bank is required to have a anti-money laundering or money laundering and uh, terrorist financing prevention uh, policy which they should implement. Uh, part of that is uh, establishing policy, setting parameters in terms of transaction amounts that would trigger a response uh, in a bank which would warrant a process of uh, what we call escalation process wherein more senior people will be called in to uh, clear a transaction. Senator Smenya. In this particular instance, Governor Espinilla, you used the phrase, an amount that is not characteristic of the bank's relationship with the customer. Of course, if you're a customer, you know this customer, and you know this volume, it's so big, it looks normal when that those amounts go in and out. But in this particular instance, 
This was a $500 deposit that just stayed dormant from the time, from the day the account was opened in May 2015. And suddenly, there are deposits to, to the four accounts, one for $6 million, another one for $30 million, another one for 20, and the last one for 25. Now, let's just take one of the accounts. Ito yung $6 million deposited to Michael Cruz. That would trigger Would that not trigger an escalating uh, approval process within any bank? Um, given those kinds of facts, Mr. Chairman, I would say it should trigger an alert. Because, uh, let's say, the account is, has not really been active. $500. Yeah, you and I and everybody else should know that it should trigger. But does it trigger? Because this has to do with the rules and regulations that are being disseminated by the Anti-Money Laundering Council. Mr. Chairman, what uh, every bank actually has uh, a judgment to make in terms of how it would uh, implement its uh, alert. Uh, and you system. have judgments also because you did already indicate to the committee that you do have grades for various types of, what do you call it, behavior, your ratings uh, uh, for the efficiency, for the sound programs, for the control of, and for the implementation of the anti-money laundering provisions. So you do have continuous grading of all our banks uh, that are within your regulatory ambit, don't we not? That's correct, Mr. Okay. Chairman. We have established a rating system to, for, uh, uh, by which we gauge the quality of uh, AML CFT compliance of a bank. That's why. So if you don't have benchmarks with which to judge them, then you couldn't possibly rate them, could you? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, for example, uh, we will have to, transactions will have to be conditioned about, uh, related to the uh, reasonableness of those transactions given the cost, the risk profile of the customer, Mr. Chairman. So, in this particular instance, let's say I have a, an imaginary depositor who deposited five, opened an account. 500 US dollars and a year later deposits 20 million dollars or a deposit arrives from another country in the amount of 20 million dollars would that not trigger in that uh, hypothetical hypothetical case mr. chairman uh, it should trigger uh, an alert because of the the size of the amount you that using the verb should yes mr chairman so it is mandatory it's not suggestive you're using should should can be used uh, in any of two ways eh? uh, dapat naman that's what should or kailangan must, must. Best, Mr. Chairman, because uh, the bank has a decision to make in terms of how to set the parameters of uh, transactions uh, that would trigger an alert, Mr. Chairman. So, and that's uh, based. You mean to say you don't have, have even standards within all your uh, banks or the banks and institutions that you regulate? Uh, there are, uh, it might be one, one million for one bank dollars and it might be 20 million for another bank. You, the, you do allow that? Mr. Chairman, the applicable standard would be the transaction should be uh, consistent, commensurate to the uh, nature of the customer. I have an account here, it's $500, it's laying dormant for one year, suddenly $20 million comes in. You can't give me a, a, a namby-pamby answer and saying, well, it depends upon the bank. And, and I, I'm, I'm talking about the requirements of the Anti-Money Laundering Council. 
uh, regulations, Mr. Chairman, does not set specific uh, amounts. So the regulation basically says that uh, the bank should set triggers that are commensurate to the Kaya transaction. Kaya nga, hindi mo kilala yung kliyente. I gi I'll give you an example. This is a guy who does, has no activity whatsoever with your bank. So, so, Mr. Chairman, the triggers there will be the lack of activity and then suddenly there's a huge influx. That's right. And it's also a wire transfer, Mr. Chairman, which is a, uh, a high, potentially high-risk transaction. So there are enough elements in your example to trigger an alert.